All right, so we are going to finish up the notes from yesterday. And then y'all will finish your assignment, and then I will give you, if you don't have your review packets or haven't gotten one yet, I'll give that to you. So this is the back of page 92. So just kind of a quick recap from yesterday. If I can divide underneath the radical, um, I will do that. If I can divide on the outside of the radical, I'll do that. Already blurry. How does that happen? I don't even know. It's probably has to do with me and my movement back here. It's, I think it's because that refocuses constantly. Um, so we'll take care of that. If we had to. I got a couple people on here today in both classes. Uh, then we got to, where am I at? Number. Those are all of you can kind of simplify first. Then we got down here where I have this five under the radical in the denominator that I can't simplify that, so I multiply that off. It's called rationalizing the denominator because we can never, ever leave a radical in the denominator. Everybody get there? So we multiply it off in the bottom. Remember, if I do the square root of five times the square root of five, that cancels the radical completely and it just leaves me with whatever is under there. And then I multiply it times two, it's still front. Everybody okay there? All right. Um, this one here, they wrote this under a single fraction. I can split that square root of 8 over the square root of 15, we'll file for 15. Everybody get there? All right. So then I think the rest of these are over here, y'all, for the most part. Okay. Um, this one here, because there is a problem kind of like this on y'all's assignment, you could have canceled this A down here with this A to the fifth and had an A to the fourth up there. You could have done that. I think some of y'all did that on your assignment. It's okay to do it that way. I just didn't do it that way because I'm gonna end up having to clean it up later anyway. So it is okay to do it like that. I just, if I'm gonna have to multiply something off the bottom, I'm just gonna multiply the whole thing off the bottom. It's just easy. Everybody okay there? All right, but you're perfectly allowed to simplify stuff first. All right, so then we have these right here where we multiply that off and I have a binomial in the numerator, which means I have to distribute uh, one of the ones on your assignment that some of y'all asked me about. If this was just eight and it wasn't the square root of eight, I would still multiply, then I would have eight times the square root of two, which would give me eight square root of two. Like we're still multiplying, we're still multiplying that. It doesn't matter whether they have radicals or they don't. I'm multiplying one thing times two, so I'm distributing. Everybody okay there? Then sometimes, I end up, like this had two radicals in the numerator. Some of y'all are like, mm, I think that's wrong. No, it's okay. Um, some of y'all, one of those canceled out and it ends up being a constant. That's okay too. You also came and asked me, does it matter which order? Technically it doesn't, but if one of these had come out to be the constant, I would prefer that you write the constant first and the radical second. But if you already wrote it, like I'm not gonna go mark that wrong. It's one of those things that technically uh, a college algebra teacher is probably going to say, I want it this way. I'm going to say, I don't care a ton. Do I prefer it to be written that way? Is mine going to be written that way? Yes, I'm going to write the constant first. But for the purposes of making sure that you have the right stuff, I'm just more concerned that we got the right stuff. Everybody right, okay? All right. So now we've got down here where I have a binomial in the denominator. We have done this before. This year was the first time we did it. We didn't do it in Algebra 1. Algebra 2 is the first time it was introduced. When that happens, I have to multiply by the conjugate. It's kind of a wonky word, but that's the word. All right, not to be confused with conjugal. If you don't know what that means, I'm not explaining it on camera. All right, so conjugate, That so when we're dealing with this conjugate, the thing is, is we have to change the sign somebody does because they're like all right change the sign of the second term and it's second term not both just the second term here's the other deal don't change the order so and why I'm saying that is because it makes a difference so if they wrote your radical first and your number second, we don't usually do that because the correct order is this, but sometimes they may write them out of order 
And in the, in the purposes of the problem, don't change it. We can change all that kind of stuff at the end. Don't do it at the beginning because you're ending up with a sign problem and stuff's not going to happen the way you want it to and you're going to have a big, huge, fat mess. So don't change the order of the stuff. Leave it as it is. But we are changing the sign of the second term. Everybody okay? All right. So I'm going to multiply times 4 minus the square root of 2. I'm multiplying times the conjugate. All right. So... In my numerator, I, and, and for this first problem, I'm gonna mul I'm gonna do every single step. I will not do that after the first problem. So here in my numerator, I'm distributing that four. So four times four gives me 16. Four times negative square root of two gives me negative four square root of two. And I'm gonna leave that alone. There's really anything I can do with it right now anyway. That's my numerator, everybody okay? All right, I'm gonna go down here to do my denominator. So if I have a binomial times a binomial, I must boil that out. Some of you, and by you, I don't necessarily mean anybody in particular. It's just some people I still have to have a little bit of trouble with boil. You need to learn that first, outside, inside, last. Make sure I beat you. All right, so first times first gives me 16. When I multiply the outside, that means these guys on the outer edges. So 4 times negative square root of 2 is going to give me negative 4 squared to 2. Then I've got I, the inside, these two right here. So plus 4 square root of 2. And then I have the last two, which is the back right here. So this one's positive, one's negative, so it's going to be minus square root of 2 times the square root of 2. The radicals cancel off, and it leaves me with 2. All right, so when I look at this, what happens here? is this right here is going to cancel. This always happens. And it always happens because technically this is what, when we go, if we go back to original, we learned how to factor, this gives us that difference of squares where I have, the, I have my binomials that are exactly the same except the signs are different. And anytime that happens, the middle always cancels. Everybody okay there? <clears throat> All right, so that middle cancels, which leaves me with 16 minus 2, which is 14. So now what I have is 16 minus 4 square root of 2 over 14. So you remember when I said we only change the sign of the second term and don't change the order of your stuff, right? If we start moving stuff around or we don't change the right sign, the middle's not going to cancel and you're still going to have a radical in your denominator, which means you did it wrong. If you end up with a radical in your denominator, you messed up. Everybody okay? All right, so what can I do here now? I'm going to divide everything by 2, except for what cannot be divided by 2? The square root. I can't touch it. So 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. Negative 4 divided by 2 gives me negative 2, square root of 2. 14 divided by 2 gives me 7. And now I am finished. Everybody okay? All right, so when we do these moving forward, I am not going to do the middle because I know it's going to cancel. All right? So, like I said, I told you I'd write it out the first time. I'm not going to do the other time. All right, so my conjugate here is what? 6 plus the square root of 5. All right. Okay, so I'm going this way with my numerator. So 2 times 6 gives me 12, and 2 times square root of 5 gives me plus 2 square root of 5. That's my numerator. Now I'll come down here and do it with my denominator. I've got basically my square and my first. 6 and 6 is going to give me minus 5. 36 minus 5. Is everybody okay with why that's 36 minus 5? Anybody not understand why that's minus 5? Because if you don't, you need to say so now, not later when you're in the middle of your assignment and, you're gonna, and you say, I don't understand why you did that. Everybody's good. All right, then I have 36 minus 5, which is 31. So then I'm looking at this. Nothing's going to simplify there, so I can go ahead and write my answer. Are we okay? 12 plus 2 square root of 5 over 31. All good? Yes. All right, next one. Grace, what's my conjugate? Uh, 1 plus 4 square root of 2.
Okay, so I'll do my numerator out here. That's going to give me what here? square root of 6, because I'm going to, these are both under the radical, so I'll multiply what's under my radical together. Square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. So then, why didn't we go back, if you go back up to number 14, why didn't we multiply those two? Which two? In square root of 12 times 2 is 24, square root of 12 In the answer. times 6 is 72. This is addition. That's not multiplication. That's addition. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Oh, boy. Not really. That's addition. My bad. Are we okay? Yeah. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Everybody good? Any questions? We're good? Okay. Denominator then. I'm going to have 1 minus what? Eight. Not 8. Not 8. Thirty-two. Okay, so here we go. Look real careful. Four times four gives me what? Sixteen times what's on our under my radical, which is two. So sixteen times two. These fours don't cancel anything off. They're not under a radical, so I have to multiply those constants out front. Are we okay there? Or not constants? The coefficients. Is everybody okay there? Anybody have a question on how I got thirty-two? So I've got to do four times four times two. 32. We good? Which is negative 31. Are we all right? Okay. So write this right here. Don't write it down here far yet. Okay. When I have a denominator with a negative sign, I want you to take that negative and push it out front. Okay? If you wrote it, I'm not going to mark it wrong. I'm just telling you how I would prefer for you to write it. Okay? So that's going to give me the square root of 3 plus 4 square root of 6 over 31 with a negative out here. And I'm saying that because it doesn't matter significantly now, but a lot of times I tell y'all things because it might, it's going to matter at a later date. More in pre-cal than in here. But if we go ahead and look at that now, it will kind of, it'll make sense later. We okay? Yes? All right, next one. Here I have my conjugate is? Square root of 5 subtract square root of 3. Square root of 5 minus square root of 3. All right, if you write big, you're going to run out of room over here. Okay, so I've got, this time I've got a foil in the numerator because I have binomial, binomial, right? All right, so I've got 5 times the square root of 5, which is 5 square root of 5, right? You okay? This one didn't have a radical. You all good? Yes. Okay, so I got 5 square root of 5. Then on my outside, I've got 5 times negative square root of 3, so minus 5 square root of 3. We okay there? Now, in the middle right there, I have square root of 5 times square root of 5, which is just 5 or negative 5 because I've got a minus there, so minus 5. And then I have negative, because this one's negative and this one's positive, square root of what? 15. And as I look across there, uh, negative 5 times a positive 5, nope, that's negative. Negative 5 times a positive 3, oh, that's a positive square root of 3, sorry, yes, that one is positive. Sorry, positive square root of 15. Y'all good there? I didn't have a sign written down very good. Is everybody okay with how we got all that? All right, and as you look at that, not one of those things are going to combine. Okay? So this one's ugly. Sometimes it happens. All right, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go deal with my denominator. All right, what happens here? We're going to get 5 back here. Minus 3, which is 2, right? All right, so here's the deal. I don't care what order you write all those radicals in. My preference is that you pull the constant to the front. Okay? So I've got negative 5 plus 5 squared of 5 minus 5 squared of 3 plus square root of 15. All the others, you just leave them in whatever order you had them in. 
I just really, we need to put that constant in the front. Uh, why are we over two? two? Because the denominator was two. Five. Oh, five plus, okay, fine. Okay. We go, you okay there? Oh, oh, I thought you had the, you put like equals two. I thought it was like, oh, Five minus three is two. I thought you were saying. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, five minus two is three, sorry. That's, you know, back to my old black order of operation teaching days where we underline the step that we're doing. Sorry. I understand why you're asking that now. Everybody, can y'all follow what I did? I could completely understand, Aubrey, if we weren't on the recording and you just looked at that on the paper. That was, I mean, I'd be like, what the heck, too. So I get it. All right. Everybody okay with that one? That shouldn't happen a ton, but I mean, if it does, it does. There's not anything we can do about it. Just met, just pull that constant to the front. All right. So taking a look at this one, my conjugate is two minus two squared seven over two minus two squared seven. All right. So this is another one that I don't have. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my numerator down here because I don't want I'm gonna run out of room. Are y'all okay? Mm -hmm. My denominator's cleaner, I think. So we'll worry about. All right, so three times two gives me six. Then I've got, uh, well, yes, but I'm gonna do the outside first. So minus six, minus six squared to seven plus your two squared to seven. Uh, Riley, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I, I do them in reverse order too. I and I have eel instead of oil, but whatever. Uh, and then at the back, we're gonna have minus 14. 14. Everybody okay there? Sometimes I do those things out of order too. Wait. Okay. I have a question, but you're going to do it a minute anyway. The it, 14, the negative 14 and the front six would go together? Yeah. Because these right here will combine. And these will combine. Okay. okay. So we'll go deal with our, well, I guess we can write that over here. So six minus 14 is going to give us negative eight minus four squared to seven. So that's our numerator, are we okay there? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna come over here and do my denominator. So I've got two times two is four, and then, so that's, this is my denominator, this is my numerator, just so I get lost in my stuff. And then my middle's gonna cancel. 21, or 28, sorry. So seven times two times two, yeah, seven times four is gonna be 28, so four minus 28. Everybody okay there while that is? Yes? Okay, so four minus 28 is gonna be negative 24, right? Mm -hmm. So let me write that over here. All right, so here's another. Well, I've got all these negatives, right? So when I simplify this, if, okay, if both of these right here are negative, we need to divide the negative out so we can get rid of it. Does that make sense? So we can divide by, yeah, negative four is actually what we're gonna simplify by. Does everybody understand why we're dividing by the negative four? Mm -hmm. We don't want a double negative out there. All right, so negative eight divided by negative four is gonna give me a positive two. Negative four divided by negative four is gonna be a positive one, which I'm not gonna write. Somebody asked me yesterday, can I write it? Yeah, I don't care. So positive one squared to seven or just squared to seven. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna get six. Now my last class, I had somebody say, wait, can't we still simplify that? No. I understand that two and six simplify, but this, you have to be able to simplify both pieces there. So if there's nothing here that I can simplify with six, then I have to stop right there. Does that make sense? The only thing that would allow me to do that, which we are not doing it, would be if I, simpl if I separated that into two fractions, which I would then have to write it as one third plus the square root of seven over six, which we are not doing, that's silly. We don't want to write it as, huh? You have to do that college algebra. Yeah, sometimes they want that, but we are not gonna do that in here because it's unnecessary for the way that we're writing our answers. Now, if they want them written separately, then yeah, we would have to separate it and write two six, which simplifies to one third, plus the square root of seven over six. But we, they, I don't want your answers that way. 
And if you have an instructor that wants it that way, you should understand that I can separate that into two separate fractions. Just like that one up there, I can separate that into four separate fractions. But typically, if we want things in its simplest form, a single fraction is the simplest form. Is everybody okay there? Tori, who do you have for that class? You don't have Miss Penland, do you? I say, because she normally would not. She would want it this way. But it kind of depends, it depends on the instructor. Some people want things in one way. It's kind of like some teachers are like, you write everything as a decimal. And then you have me, and I'm like, don't you write anything as a decimal unless I tell you to. Because fractions are a more accurate number. That's why I prefer them. So that it's just that sometimes it's a matter of preference. Sometimes, typically, it's just a matter of preference. And it kind of depends on what it is that you're doing. All right, this one here, I'm going to multiply this off. 3 plus 4 is 36. 3 plus 4 is 36. All right, numerator right small, but I have a little more room out here. So 8 times 3 gives me 24 um, plus 32 squared is 6. Minus 3 squared is 6. Minus Everybody okay there? All right, we can go ahead and simplify that. I guess 24 minus 24 cancels. And then 32 minus 3 gives me 29 squared of 16. So that's what I got in my numerator. We okay there? 16. Yeah, 16. Oh, not 16, 6. Sorry. Don't hear your question. Yes, 6. Sorry about that. We okay there? Yes? All right, in the denominator, we got 3 minus what? <laughs> 96. Maddie, how we get 96? Uh, 4 times 4 times 6. Everybody okay with 4 times 4 times 6? Where all that comes from? How much is it? Yeah, that's isn't the what? first one just supposed to be nine? So three times three. Oh yeah, it should be nine. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Yes, it should be nine. Thank you for fixing me. Nine minus ninety-six. All right, we okay now? All right. We can get the complicated stuff now. Simple. Okay, so then nine minus ninety-six is eighty-seven. Negative eighty-seven. So oh, now I have 29 six. squared of 6 over negative 87, One third. which is not your answer, right? <laughs> negative squared of 3 over, or negative squared of 6 over 3. Becomes negative squared of 6 over 3. Because even though 29 is prime and y'all are like, oh, nothing's going to go into 29 and 87, 29 goes into 87, so make sure you check that. And if you're not sure, alpha y equals 29 over 87, I'll get it to you. All right, but I want the negative up at the top, so negative 6 or out front over square over 3. Negative 3, 6 over there. All right, we get there. All right, so you're going to finish your assignment, and then 